In this video, we're going to look at view factors, which are essential in calculating the radiation exchange between surfaces. The view factor, Fij, is defined as the fraction of radiation which leaves a surface I that is incident on surface J. All the radiation leaving surface I, some of it will miss surface J, and some of it will hit surface J. And the fraction of the total which hits J is by definition this view factor Fij. Obviously, it's something that we need if we want to calculate the, whole, the total radiation exchange between surface I and surface J. Mathematically, it has a reasonably complicated definition. We can imagine that surface I is a differential element of area DAI, and surface J is a differential area, which doesn't look differential in this uh, particular view because it isn't, but for the definition, it's a differential area. And these two surface surfaces are separated by a distance r, or vector r, and they have a surface normal, an i, and a surface normal, n j. And of course, there's in this view, there's not an angle between these two because of the particular geometry, but in general, there's an angle between this surface normal i and this radius vector. And the cosine of that angle is what appears in this view factor. Now, it's a complicated integral because we're integrating a double surface integral. We have to integrate over the entire surface AI and over the entire surface AJ. And for this reason, it can sometimes be quite complicated to calculate these things analytically. And we'll be resorting to a lot of tables in, or other methods in order to find out what these view factors are. Here's an example of a view factor between a infinite strip. So these are infinite into the page. Uh, of i and j, where we can vary the length of surface i with respect to surface j. And uh, this is an equation that's available to you. I've plotted it for a few different cases where the width of i and j are equal at one meter. And I plotted the view factor fij, so the fraction leaving i that's instant, instant upon j, over the separation length between them, l. So we can see clearly that as we increase the separation distance, less of the radiation leaving surface I is going to be incident upon surface J. And that, of course, makes sense. As this gets further away, more of it's going to miss surface J. We can also see that if we keep them at the same size, a width of 1 meter and a width of 2 meters, both equal, uh, and we, in, sorry, if we have WI is equal to WJ in these two cases, the blue and the orange, but we increase the size, that's the blue to the orange, this view factor increases. And of course that makes more and more sense because as the size of these gets larger and larger, there's a larger section in the middle which has a much higher probability of seeing the other surface uh, than missing if it's smaller. And if we make surface I smaller uh, compared to surface J, then again it's not surprise, surprising that the green line is above the blue line as WI gets smaller compared to J, it's more likely that it's going to hit it than miss it. And so this is what this is showing us, and there are many others, uh, view factor relations that we can look at. Now, there are, of course, some relations between the view factors. The two most important ones are the reciprocity rule and the summation rule. The reciprocity rule says that if I know the area of surfaces i and j, and I know fij, that I can calculate fji. And it is simply that the area times fij is equal to aj times the view factor fji, the fraction of radiation leaving surface J that is incident upon I. Also, by conservation of energy, all of the radiation leaving surface I has to go somewhere, and so if we look at the summation of all the view factors from Fi going to all the other surfaces to which it is in radiative contact with, that has to equal 1. All of the radiation has to go somewhere. So, while this is a complicated relation, there's many ways that we can reduce the number of these that we have to calculate. So, if we imagine that we have some enclosure that in this case has seven surfaces, or n surfaces, where n is equal to seven here, then since every surface has a view factor with every other surface, I need one between s1 and s2, s1 and s3, s4, s1 and s4, etc., and I need to do that for every surface, then there are obviously n squared, or in this example, 49 view factors that are necessary to calculate the radiation exchange in this enclosure. The summation rule at each surface can be used to calculate n view factors. If I know all of the view factors but one, surface 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, all the way, but not one, uh, 7, of course the summation rule, 1 minus the sum of the others, is going to tell me that last one. Also, I can use the reciprocity rule at each surface to calculate 
one, one half n times n minus 1 view factors, which is easy to see. If I know the view factor between s1 and s2, and I know these areas, then I can calculate the view factor between s2 and s1. I can do that for all these surfaces, which gives me this amount of view factors. And so in this case, I only need to calculate directly n squared, the total of 49, minus the n that I get from the summation rule, minus the 1 half n times the n minus 1 from the reciprocity rule, and I only need to directly calculate 1 half n over n minus 1 view factors. It's still a fairly large number, but it's a lot less than the 49 in this example. Now often we can get the view factors by inspection. FII in this planar surface is obviously zero, and it's obviously zero because any radiation that is leaving this surface cannot possibly hit itself because the radiation is leaving in a straight line tra trajectory at some azimuth and zenith angle from this surface. It obviously can't hit itself, and so we know that it's zero. If we look at the outer surface of a closed circle or a, a convex shape, then of course, again, by inspection, it's zero. Anything that's leaving this cannot possibly hit itself, and therefore we know that FII, the view factor with itself, is equal to zero. If we look at the inner surface, however, it's equal to 1. No matter where direction I leave from on this surface, it's going to hit itself. And so we can see by inspection that on the inner surface of this shape, or for a concave surface, the view factor is not 0. And if it's fully enclosed concave surface, then it's a view factor of 1. So looking at a more interesting example, suppose we have surface I that is this outer box, and an inner surface, surface J, uh, that's the inner box then we can see immediately that Fjj is zero. There's no way that radiation leaving surface J can hit itself in any way. We can see that Fji is one, since it can't hit itself, and there's only one other surface. Of course, the summation rule is going to tell us this. But uh, we can see clearly that anything leaving I is going to hit J because of this geometry. So we know Fji is equal to one. And we know that Fij is not equal to one. Something that's leaving I could hit itself instead of hitting J. And so clearly, Fij is not equal to 1. Some of it's going to hit itself. But the reciprocity rule will enable us to calculate that Fij because we know Fji is equal to 1. And we know these areas, so we can, of course, calculate it. And, of course, from the summation rule, we can calculate Fii, what is the fraction that leaves i, that is incident upon i. And now we have all the view factors that we need in order to do this calculation. Okay, another way of doing this is to use the Monte Carlo technique. In using the Monte Carlo technique, what we're doing is ray tracing. In fact, you've probably seen this if you've watched movies. In order to do good animations or um, embellishments in movies, they'll often use ray tracing to see where the light goes and where it gets reflected to, etc. And all we're doing in a, ray, in a ray tracing is correctly accounting for the physics of radiation. We're sending out random rays at azimuth and zenith angles, and we're counting. If we send out enough random rays, how many of them are incident upon surface I versus how many I sent out? If I pick a large enough sample, simply counting the number that hit versus the number that miss will give me this view factor. So I've reproduced this plot here, and I've shown you the Monte Carlo, or this random ray tracing technique that I've used, in order to show that I can perfectly match these curves using this Monte Carlo technique. It can be computationally expensive, especially if we have lots of surfaces, because I'm sending out millions of rays from each surface. But we can calculate this for very, very complicated surfaces, and it's an incredibly handy technique in order to do this. So for more complicated surfaces, you may need to go to your tables or your charts. And so this is an example of a three-dimensional surface, which is separated by a distance L. It's two parallel rectangles, so the, the surfaces are the same, but they're separated and they're parallel and they're separated by a distance L. So that represents two parallel rectangles separated by a distance L, and the rectangles are of the same size, the same dimensions. And again, we can look at this and see that the view factor relations make sense, but we can use this chart in order to get those view factors. We also have another situation where the rectangles are perpendicular with a common edge, which is another common one. This is where we have surfaces that look like this, and we're looking for the view factor between these surfaces. We should, of course, label this i and j, knowing what fij is. And we can then use all our relations in order to calculate all the view factors if, say, we had an enclosed box. 
we can get some of the relations from looking at the opposite walls in our closed box, some of the relations from the adjacent boxes, and then we could use the summation rules and the reciprocity rules in order to get all of those view factors that we need for our calculation. Now remember this complex definition, the definition of the view factor, um, we can actually discretize these surfaces into little area elements, and we can use this relation directly in order to calculate the view factor of each little area element with each other little area element. It also ends up being computationally expensive because I need to look at if I draw a small differential element here, I need to look at what is the view factor between each of the ones, each of the differential elements on surface J here, and I need to do that for every single one of these. That's the nature of this double area integral. Uh, and then combine them correctly using our reciprocity rules and stuff in order to calculate the total view factor. And that's what I've done. It's much easier than the Monte Carlo technique in actuality, and we can use it for much more complicated problems. And that's what I've done, and these x's are showing how it perfectly matches uh, the solutions uh, that we get from these view factor relations. So you could extend this to some very complicated situations. That works also in this case here, but you can see that it does get expensive. Now these cases up here where these numbers are small mean that one of these surfaces is much, much smaller than the other. And there it becomes much, much uh, more, we need much smaller elements in order to realistically capture this. So you can see that with the resolution I was using, it's starting to deviate for these cases. Whereas when the surfaces of more comparable sizes, it's a much simpler calculation to do. This of course can be fixed. It's just a longer computation. I'm gonna sum quickly summarize this is the black body exchange. Now that we have our view factors, we can put this in another context. If we're looking at the radiation exchange between surface I and J, we know that that radiation exchange, QI to J, is going to be the radiosity, the total radiation leaving surface I in watts per meter squared times the area of surface I will give us watts, and then the fraction of radiation that's leaving I that hits J is needed in order to say how much of it is actually exchanged with surface J. So we can use this with our radiosity in order to get this radiation exchange. Now we can expand upon that. We know that if it's a black body, the total radiosity is given by the Stefan-Boltzmann law, sigma times the temperature of I raised to the fourth power in Kelvin. And therefore, I can write that Qij is equal to Ai Fij sigma Ti to the fourth. Now at the same time, Qji is going to be given by the same arguments, by this relation here, where we have Fji instead and therefore QJI is going to be equal to this amount here. Now I want the net radiation exchange between them, and so the net exchange is the difference between these two, and we can simplify that to a relation that looks very similar to what we had before, except before we had assumed that the view factor was one. We didn't have the concept of the view factor at that point, and so we'd assume that it was one, and that works for a limited subset of of surfaces, perhaps when you have a small surface exposed to large surroundings, and you notice that we talked about the surrounding temperature when we did these calculations instead of the specific surface temperature. So the view factor gives us a tool to do this in a much wider array of geometries and enclosures that we might want to analyze. And of course, if we have a gray surface to surroundings, well, like I just talked about, then that view factor is equal to one, and we can add, of course, uh, the emissivity of that surface, and we see the relation that we've been using previously for our gray surfaces.